everyone. This video is going to be about uh, determining major, minor, and middle terms uh, in categorical syllogisms, and then determining whether or not they're valid <clears throat> by checking a chart uh, from the Boolean or Aristotelian standpoint. All right, so uh, number one is given, so I'm gonna move on to number two. Uh, no insects that eat mosquitoes are insects that should be killed. Uh, all dragonflies are insects that eat mosquitoes, therefore no dragonflies are insects that should be killed. Okay, so uh, first we need to symbolize uh, uh, or simplify the categorical statements. So here, M is insects that eat mosquitoes, K are insects that should be killed, and D are dragonflies. So the structure of this is no M R K, all D R M, no D R K. Okay, so um, first let's determine the uh, major, minor, and middle terms. Uh, the major term is the predicate of the conclusion. The minor term is the subject of the conclusion. And the middle term is the term that appears twice, once in each premise. Twice in the premises, once in each premise. So our middle term is, you can see that M is our middle term. What does M represent? What does it represent? Insects, insects that eat mosquitoes. Middle term, insects that eat mosquitoes. Our major term uh, occurs in the first premise. Uh, it, but we know it by, because it's the predicate of the uh, conclusion. Predicate of the conclusion is insects that are, should be killed. So the major term is insects that should be killed, which leaves us with our minor term D, which are dragonflies. All right, so we, we've identified the major, the minor, and the middle terms, and then we need to determine the mood and figure of this. Remember, mood is the list of... Um, the types of categorical statements you have going from top to bottom. So no MRK is E, an E form statement. All D R M here is an A form statement. And the conclusion is no D R K, which is E as well. So it's an E A E. That's the mood of this categorical syllogism. And then we have to determine figure. All right, so let me pause it here and I'll go to the section on figure and provide a brief explanation. Okay, so the way that they approach this, it works for me, it might not work for you. If you think about uh, <clears throat> the, a collar, the mood is the relationship uh, of the structure of the middle terms. So if the middle term goes on an angle down, I'm, actually I can't use my hands because this video is a mirror image, so I don't want to confuse you. But so just look at this. If the middle term is, is the subject in the first premise and the predicate in the second, that's a figure one form. If, if the, um, the middle terms are stacked on the right-hand side, that's figure two. If the middle terms are stacked on the left-hand side, that's figure three. And if the middle term goes up uh, on the angle, uh, to the right, that's figure four. So if we go back to our example here, uh, we can see that our middle term is here and here. So it's angling down, again, sorry, I can't use my, it, it'll go the opposite way. It's angling down to the right. So what type of figure is that? Well, that is figure one. Angling down to the right, figure one. So this is an EAE one, that's the mood and figure. All right, so we know the middle term, the major term, the minor term, and now we have the figure. Now we have to use um, the, uh, the form chart to determine whether or not these are valid from the Boolean perspective, conditionally valid from the Aristotelian perspective. Everything that's valid from the Boolean perspective here, unconditionally valid, is also valid from the Aristotelian perspective. But these extra forms down here uh, are valid only from the Aristotelian perspective, and then also uh, they have required conditions that we'll get into in future problems. All right, so let's see. Is EAE1, figure one, uh, is that uh, a valid form? 
if we look at our chart here, we look at figure one, come down, do we see EAE? We do. So EAE, one is an unconditionally valid form. So we know that this argument is in fact valid uh, from the Boolean perspective, but therefore of necessity from the Aristotelian perspective. Okay, let's move on to the next. Okay, number three here. <clears throat> no environmentally produced diseases are inherited, inherited afflictions. No E or I. Some psychological disorders are not inherited afflictions. Notice this is our middle term because it's, it's the same class uh, in the premises. So some P are not I. Some P are not I, second premise. Therefore, conclusion indicator, by the way, some psychological disorders are environmentally produced diseases. Therefore, some P are E. Some P are E. All right, so we've symbolized this. Um, <clears throat> or we've placed it in a more uh, concise categorical form. Major, minor, middle terms. Well, we already found I. We can see I. Remember, the middle term is the one that occurs once in each premise. Um, I, so what is I again? I is inherited afflictions. So our middle term is inherited afflictions. The major term is the predicate of the conclusion. It also occurs in the first premise. That's how you should always structure your categorical syllogisms. E, what is E? E was uh, environmentally produced diseases. That's our major term. Leaving our minor term, which is the subject class of the conclusion, psychological disorders. All right, so we found our, our major, our middle, and our minor terms. Now we need mood and figure. The mood, again, are three letters that represent the two premises and conclusion in order. No E R I, E form statement. Some P are not I. O form statement, some P R E, I form statement, E O I. Now we need to determine uh, the figure. <clears throat> so remember when um, the collar, uh, the collar method, or just memorize it yourself, when the middle terms are stacked on the right, that is a figure two. And that's just something you're gonna have to memorize. Uh, slanting down to the right from top to bottom, figure one, stacked on the right, figure two, stacked on the left, figure three, and then slanting up, figure four. So this is an EOI two. So we go back uh, to our, we need to figure out if this is a valid form. So it's figure two, so we look here and we see EOI, EOI figure two is an unconditionally valid form. So from the Boolean standpoint, it's valid which again of necessity means it's uh, valid from the uh, Aristotelian standpoint. <clears throat> uh, okay, so let's do another one. All right, uh, all ozone, number five, <clears throat> all ozone molecules are good absorbers of ultraviolet rays. All ozone molecules, I'm gonna use M, are good absorbers, A, you can use whatever you want. Um, all ozone molecules are good absorbers. Absorbers, all ozone molecules are things destroyed by chlorine. Um, all ozone molecules are C, C being things destroyed by chlorine. And then finally, some things destroyed by chlorine are good absorbers. So finally, some C are A. Middle term, M, is ozone molecules. Uh, major term, predicate of the conclusion, A, what was that? Good absorbers of ultraviolet rays. And minor term, C, is uh, things destroyed by chlorine. So we know a major, middle, minor term. Now we need to do mood and figure. So mood, uh, all MRA, uh, A, all MRC, A form statement. Some C, R, A, I, A, A, I. Figure, figure is the orientation of the middle term. Middle term stacked on the left in the subject classes, however you best think about it. That is a, a, a form three. A, A, I form three. So now we need to check our, our um, 
list of uncondi or conditionally and unconditionally valid forms. So we have uh, figure three, AAI three. Uh, you can see that um, AAI is not listed in the table. So now we check the, um, the conditionally valid forms. Um, this would be the Aristotelian standpoint. Uh, AAI, we do see it as a conditionally valid form, but we have to make sure that the middle term is something that actually exists. If it's not, then um, this is invalid uh, from both perspectives. All right, so what's our middle term here? All right, <clears throat> um, ozone molecules, right? So do ozone molecules actually exist? They do. And because they do exist, this would be uh, conditionally valid from the Aristotelian standpoint, um, but not the Boolean standpoint. All right, so I hope that helped you uh, learn a little bit about mood and figure, as well as major, minor, and middle terms, and determining those things in um, categorical syllogisms.